06 on Saturday morning, six o'clock. And I'm on my third rotation of dogs right now, already about six o'clock. Big man Gunther taking a little morning brew. But uh, it's an early day, man. I didn't get to bed last night till about 11.45, taking care of little things here and there. And then back up this morning at four o'clock in the morning. Why are we up at four o'clock in the morning on a Saturday? Because we have a young staff today, a um, junior staff, relatively new. They've only been here six-ish, six-ish, my retainers are in, six-ish months. And we have a heavy volume for the holidays right now. So at the end of the day, me and Clay get up at four o'clock and we're here and uh, we're rolling. And yeah, it's, 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 it can be rough, man. And there's one thing I've said it a million times and I'll say it a million more times, which is training dogs is hands down the easy part. Logistics, staffing, overlapping uh, shifts, HR, taxes, legal, accountants. That's hard. So there are times when no matter how many employees you have, when your staff is a little younger on this day, a little greener, and you really can't ever afford to have an accident happen, and you got some pretty serious dogs on deck, you bring your ass up four o'clock in the morning, you get here at 5.15 in the morning, and you start breaking dogs, baby. That's what it's all about. It's crazy, man. The amount of people that think dog training is about dog training. Dog training, physical aspect of obedience is 40% at best, for sure. Um, everything else is logistics, man. Cleaning, time management, no sleep. Dogs the last break at nighttime. Dogs the first break in the morning. And uh, they're living creatures, right? So I think a lot of people that get in this line of work forget these are living creatures with needs. And from walking and breaking to eating to exercise, stimulus, training, all the same stuff you got to do for your kids, right? Can you imagine how fun it would be if you say, hey, I'm going to run a 24-hour daycare for all the badass kids in the world? <laughs> I mean, can you No, Nobody would do that, right? Of course you would. It'd be crazy. Who would want to do that? Get a bunch of knucklehead kids. That'd be no fun. But yet, we do that exact thing with dogs and a lot of times it's no fun it's work it's real work it's hard work it's work that never ends it's groundhog day every day and uh it's not for the faint of heart honestly speaking it breaks a lot of people and if you get into dog training just because you love dogs and you want to hug on dogs and play with dogs that's cool but honestly speaking you should volunteer at like the spca the humane society or county shelter city shelter pound whatever some rescue groups because that's cool, but that is apples and oranges and worlds apart. Loving dogs to actually training, living with. Oh shit. Knock the phone out of my hand. Everything else. Hey man, morning time rant. Very nice mom. Never overlook the environment you're working in, man. I can't say it enough. Very nice. Oh my gosh, she's doing great now. She's a strong little dog. She's definitely ignoring everybody else. Doing fantastic, man. Stay with it, stay in the moment. All right, guys, where's my hunters at? See the doe? Look real close on that wood line right there. Back up just a little bit. I need you to look real close right there. Ready? Wait for it. See him? See that massive buck right there, boy? You can't even see him. We are back home. Rocky man supervising. Now a girl hanging. I'm making some coffee. Clutch doing what wives are supposed to do. <laughs> Fold that laundry. Fold it faster. Let's go. Yeah. Fold it. Fold it. Fold that laundry. You know what happens when I throw stuff. Anyway, we're going to move on from that. And um, absolutely, hands down, best coffee maker on the face of the planet. Let me show you. So we just ran through a cleaning cycle. You got to do that. 
best setting foam on the bottom coffee espresso in the middle foam on top and then we double brew the espresso we'll hit it oh shit stand by i already cleaned damn milk hold on oh i see I know exactly what I'm doing. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, Boom. This is going to be a process. It's going to grind up them beans. Fresh beans go in the back and grinds them up. Starting a steaming process with the milk. So I actually don't use real milk. I actually steam the vanilla uh, coffee mate. It's absolutely ridiculous when it's steamed and frothed correctly. Again, you put your fresh beans um, back in here. And then as it needs it, it just sucks them down. And put that back on tight. So just finish the first layer of froth. It's a lot, but it's only because it's all frothed up. And now here in just a second, the magic is gonna happen. Takes a second, and then all of a sudden, that liquid gold's gonna start coming out. There it comes. Oh, yes sir. Okay, now the real trick. Now hold on. Just finish that coffee. Gotta clean the milk real quick. You always want to clean that out after you froth it, otherwise, you, you know, put a little steam in there, it stays clean. Pretty important. That'll be done in a second. All right, that's done. Spin that off. Put that back. Now, the trick to making this an enjoyable cup of coffee is after it's already brewed and frothed, you put it back in, and then you go just to a little espresso shot times two. Brew it again. So now it's going to give us no froth, but another espresso shot on top of the latte I just made. And there it comes. So now we're hitting it with a double dose. Yes, sir. And then last but not least, just take this beautiful little bottle, bottle of skinny vanilla. You don't got to really measure this. Just put a little splash. You don't want to put too much. Stuff strong. It's like drinking a vanilla ice cream shake. You don't want to do that. I want to be able to taste the coffee. I'm struggling with this lid. There we go. Dunske. Dunske. And now we take our hand frother, stick her in, and that little son bitch is spinning a couple hundred RPM. Oh, it's going. But that's just mixing everything up. I like my coffee nice and mixed up. Leave it alone. Leave it off of there. Boom. Clean. Clean as a whistle. Put it there. The maid will clean that later. Just pull this bad boy out. Put the milk back in the fridge, and we are good to go. I'm telling you, this is like four shots of espresso, whipped, foamed, vanilla milk, and it is absolutely delicious. Starbucks has to be like $12, something like that, probably. And uh, here, it's free. Here we go. Tell me you're a millennial without telling me you're a millennial. Here's, here's a good opportunity. <laughs> Tell them you're a millennial without telling them you're a millennial, Kevin. Where's your other dog? You got two? One or two? There you go. Yes, sir. <laughs> a little Saturday afternoon, get rid of the evidence time. It's an old shoebox right there. Burn it up. She don't know we got it. <laughs> it's pretty cold, man. Cold, dreary day on the mountain. Getting rid of trash. Give you guys a little updated tour, man. The construction site is still ongoing. So, gazebo got finished a while ago. Pretty sharp, looks pretty damn good. Heavy timber, stone post on top of stone patio. We're still waiting on our furniture to come in. Who the hell knows when that's gonna happen. But uh, really, really pretty construction. Really cool. It's got full LED lights on it, etc. And then construction project number two is well underway. I feel like for the last eight years, I mean, literally we bought this house in 2014 and it's been a construction project ever since. Everything you see here, we have done every stone, every, I mean, everything. Every window, every shingle, every piece of wood, every door, every damn stone been constructed, reconstructed, fixed, taken out, put back in correctly. And uh, over here, it's pretty cool. So take a walk. Still love my stairs, man. These stairs, everything was redone. These stairs were basically collapsed when we bought this house eight years ago. But anyway, this is the new project project. So I won't tell you exactly what it's going to be. But uh, the back stone wall is done. The grading on the upper pasture is done. Obviously, you can see footers in here. 
and a whole lot of wood that's got to go up. Look at these beams. Good gracious. Here, put this in perspective for you. Look at these beams. My Lord, they are massive. Massive and massive. Ton of them. Over here. Beautiful. 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 And just a whole bunch more. Whole bunch more wood. Whole bunch more logs. Whole bunch more stuff. I swear to God, it never ends, man. But it's all good. Good problems to have. Good problems to have. It's going to look sharp when it's done. I can tell you that it is going to look cool. Look at old Kevin out there taking the trash out. Got dogs out with him running, putting trash in the dumpster, packing it down. He just realized he probably hasn't seen Rocky in the last 45 seconds, so you see him looking up. Who knows? He tends to get a little distracted. He goes out there burning boxes. Got his back up with him. Hope that fire is under control. Never quite know what's going to happen. And you got a millennial doing crazy things, burning stuff. All kinds of problems going to arrive. That's all right. <laughs> A lot going on out there.